Mr. President, climate disruption is a seminal challenge of our generation. It affects everything from our farms to our forests to our fisheries. We're seeing huge impacts around the world, disappearing ice in the Arctic, melting permafrost, dying coral, raging fires, more powerful storms. Everywhere you look, it's having an impact. And it's certainly an impact that we need to pay a great deal of attention to because it is uh, hurting human civilization. And the, and the impacts are just beginning. They're going to become worse over time. In response, communities across the globe are transforming their energy economies. They're certainly making their economies more energy efficient, from increasing the insulation in buildings to improving vehicle mileage to having the greater efficiency in appliances, and to replacing fossil fuel energy with clean, renewable energy. How much do you know about the changes underway, about the dramatic modifications of our energy economy and the impacts of climate disruption? Let's find out. Welcome to Episode 8 of the Senate Climate Disruption Quiz. Here we go. First question, researchers predict that there will be an ice-free Arctic by the summer of what year? Will it be the year 2020, three years from now, the year 2030, the year 2075, or will it be 2100, the end of the century? Lock in your answers. Here is the correct answer. That is B, the year 2030. Researchers say that as early as 2030, the Arctic Ocean could essentially lose all of its ice during the year's warmest months. We see here a map of what was happening in the past. Uh, the red outlines, in addition to the pink and white, represent where the ice was in the summer of 1980. 1998, less area covered. 2012, yet less cover area covered. And uh, in the last two summers, the Northwest Passage has been free of ice. And that is what has enabled a ship called the Crystal Serenity to move up and then essentially take tourists through the Northwest Passage where you see this uh, ice in 1998 and 1980. So that's a, that's a big change. Uh, so if we have an effort uh, to address the improvements made in Paris, then the estimate is there'd still be ice here in that year of 2030, an area that's about the size of India. That's a substantial amount of ice. But as you can see, it's really shrinking quickly. OK, on to our second question. Over the next decade, the number of U.S. wind energy technicians is expected to decline by 10 percent, uh, grow by 100 percent, that is to double, remain about stable, or disappear completely. Lock in your answers. The correct answer is grow by over 100%. In other words, it will double. And these are jobs that are good jobs. Uh, last year, more than 100,000 people were employed in some manner by the wind industry. And the median pay was about $51,000 a year, a good middle class job. And we're seeing the jobs grow as the demand for wind energy grows uh, throughout the country. The American Wind Energy Association says that in just the first three months of 2017, 2,000 megawatts of wind power were added, which is almost a four-fold increase over what happened in 2000, the first three months of 2016. So big changes happening quickly. Question number three. President Thompson, Trump's administration released a study in November, the National Climate Assessment. And President Trump's study attributed the major cause of climate disruption to 
volcanic activity? Or did his study say that the major cause was natural cycle or human activity or solar activity? Lock in your answers. The answer is, on this study from President Trump's team, not volcanic activity and not solar activity and not a natural cycle. It was, in fact, human activity. Study from the Trump administration. They produced a, a chart that said, when you look at the temperature increase, how much can be attributed to human-caused activity? And as you can see, a massive chart here. How much can be attributed to solar flares, solar activity, and, and being closer to the sun? Very little impact. And how much can be attributed to volcanic activity? And that was actually negative. So from the Trump administration, a huge statement that human activity is causing the increase of the temperature of our planet. Turning to question number four. Why did India shut down New Delhi schools? And that's 4,000 schools. Why did India shut down New Delhi's 4,000 schools for several days in November? Was it A, lead in the water, B, religious tensions, C, record air pollution, or four, a population explosion? Lock in your answers. The correct answer is, in fact, record air pollution. And you can measure this, but you can also see it. And so I'll put up a picture of that pollution in New Delhi. Now, you can barely see these people from a short distance away riding a motorcycle with the father clamping his hand over his son's face, hoping to reduce the, the impact of the air pollution on the, on the children. This air pollution was considered to be equivalent to smoking 50 cigarettes a day. And the doctors are saying that the kids who come in, young kids who come in that should have pink lungs, have dark lungs, gray, black lungs. So it's having a huge, huge uh, health impact. The US Embassy in New Delhi measures the air quality uh, according to a, a category called uh, PM, uh, particulate matter, 2.5. And it refers to minuscule particulate matter with diameters of 2.5 micrometers and or less. Because these are the very, very tiny particles that can lodge deep in the lungs and cause all kinds of, of problems in the lungs and as they are absorbed into the bloodstream. The EPA standard, Environmental Protection Agent standard, considers anything between 151 and 200 as unhealthy. The, what they registered on this day was 1,000. It topped the 1,000 mark. And uh, boy, you can understand then how dangerous that is. And this is from burning fossil fuels causing this pollution, burning coal specifically. And that brings us to our final question, question five. What percent of American voters support staying in the Paris Agreement? And this, of course, is the international agreement uh, in which uh, every country of the world is now involved. Uh, recently, there were two countries that had not signed up, and that was uh, Nicaragua and Syria, but they've both signed up now. Of course, President Trump has said that uh, he plans to leave. Technically, we're still signed up because he can't leave under the agreement until November 2020. But still, because he said planning to leave, it has produced a lot of reaction by American citizens and uh, those for and against. But what percent of American voters support staying in? Is it 
great opposition. 15%, a little more than uh, a one out of eight. A 45%, just shy of half, or 70%. Lock in your answers. Well, the Yale Program in Climate Communication did a poll uh, released uh, earlier this year, and the answer is that 70%, 7 out of 10 Americans say stay in. Now, this support is more than half for every party, uh, including the unaffiliated voters or independent voters. It's very high among Democrats, 86%. Uh, among independents, it's 61%. But 51%, more than one out of every two Republicans say, yes, stay in. They also took a look at self-identified voters for President Trump, and there again, more than one out of two, a majority say, stay in. So there you have it, folks. Episode eight of the Senate Climate Disruption Quiz. Issues ripped from the headlines on the most important issue facing the survival of humankind on this planet. Carbon dioxide levels are accelerating and running through the roof. The temperature of our planet is accelerating. Our, temp our planet has caught a fever. And there is no doctor for the planet. We have to address it. We have to act. We are the first generation to experience the impacts and the last generation that can head off catastrophic consequences. We're racing the clock. There's no time to spare. So stay engaged. And in the future, I'll bring you episode nine of the Senate Climate Disruption Quiz. Thank you.